Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're going to use the Rays Pro 2 Plus to print topographical maps. But first, let's move this to the studio. So I'm using the Pro 2 Plus because it's really tall, which is going to make it really easy to print some of the more recognizable city skylines for those topographical maps. Now, I don't just have the Pro 2 Plus here, I also have the cart that goes with it. And what's really nice about this cart is that it has divots in the top of it, so the wheels of the Pro 2 Plus lock into it. They move as one unit that's not going to fall off. The cart also has storage for filament, so I can keep some of my really big spools, a lot of different colors down there. It's all stored away neatly behind the roll top door. And there's a special drawer that has cutouts for all the tools you might need, like calipers, spatulas, tweezers, or spare nozzles, things like that. Now, what I really like about the Raze Pro 2 Plus is that it has a removable build plate, which makes it really easy to do lots of printing, because I can just remove that, put in a new plate, and start printing on that one while I work on removing the first part. And I also have a filament runout sensor, so as I'm printing things that take up the entire build volume, I'm not concerned that, oh no, I'm going to run out of filament mid-print. It's going to pause it for me and keep it saved. And then at that point, I can use the really intuitive touch screen to maneuver through all the different motions and changing the filament, the load and unload macros and different things like that. When we were coming up with the idea for topographical maps, we wanted to do locations that were of significance to matter hackers or would be interesting to see 3D printed. So the first place that would be of clear significance is doing matter hackers headquarters. So matter hackers HQ, is just a bunch of office buildings around us so it wouldn't be too interesting to do a really tall cityscape like you might with another major city so we'll make a hex tile and if you don't know what a hex tile is we have another video going way in depth into that we'll link that in the description but that is a community hex tile wall where you can print out a hexagon piece put whatever design you want on it you can send it to us and that will be displayed within our office for the next map we wanted to do something that would utilize the build height of the rays pro 2 plus and for us, that was a city skyline, and specifically New York City. They have a lot of recognizable buildings there, so we're gonna go with the Empire State Building and the surrounding blocks. So we'll do New York, Empire State, and the only reason we picked the Empire State Building among all the others is because, to be honest, that's the one that gets destroyed first in any alien invasion movie, so that's gonna be the one that's gonna be most recognizable to the most people. We also wanted to do something else that was city-based that was also recognizable to a lot of people and held significance to people at Matter Hackers, so LA made sense to us. Now LA doesn't have quite as recognizable buildings, you wouldn't be able to look at that and go, yep, that's LA. So we'll just do the downtown area as a whole rather than just one building. So do LA, downtown, and we'll make that one a hex tile as well so we can incorporate a lot more area. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and start getting those models ready, get them prepped for the Rays Pro 2 Plus, and we'll see what we can create. So first, you need to go into CAD Mapper, select the area you want to export, and make sure all the settings match what's here. Then you can download this file, and then you will need to unzip this and put this into SketchUp. Once you're in SketchUp, you can decide what features you want to keep or delete, like do you want to keep the roads and the parks? You'll have to do some work if you choose to keep those to make them actually printable, because right now they have no thickness, so I'm just going to delete them. And from there, we can export this as an STL. Then from there, I can bring this into NetFab and do a lot more detailed modifications. Like I can go into the repair menu and see that there's no thickness to the land, so we'll just thicken that. And then from there, I can do an extended repair so that all the buildings are merged with the land and refresh. And I can see that there's a couple that are left. Do a little cleanup. Now that that's good, I'm going to make a Z plane and look through it, make sure there aren't any weird overhangs, that everything is good, in which they are. So then we can apply the repair. And then we'll use a Z plane cut so that we have a flat bottom on this piece and make it printable. Delete that weird bottom section. We'll scale it so that it's actually able to be printed and it's not way too big, or we could leave it that size and cut it into a couple pieces. Then we'll make a cylinder with six sides and a 75 millimeter radius, which is 150 from each side. Then we can cut that out to make a hex tile. So we'll just Boolean them, do an intersection where only the two objects intersect. And that leaves us with a very simple hex tile that we can print out no problem.
For Matter Hackers HQ, I wanted to use OpenStreetMaps again, but it doesn't include topology. CAD Mapper, which is a free website where you can export a square kilometer of data, actually includes topology and the buildings. So we can have the hills that are around Matter Hackers and then the smaller buildings that are around us as well, like offices and apartments, and you can even see the channels where the roads will go through. It won't render the roads, but at least you can see where they are. And then from there, I can pull out the actual buildings of Matter Hackers, print those in a different color, and glue them back on. Let's get to it. Just as before, I went into CAD Mapper and found the area around Matter Hackers and created a 3D model from that. Then I had to bring that into SketchUp to do a little cleanup. Now, different from before is I decided not to delete anything and instead export it as is and see what I could do with the roads that are there. Now that I'm in NetFab, I can bring in that same model and try and mess with the meshes in order to make the roads actually printable. So I'll go into the repair menu, extend the land like I did before, and then manually go through, select everything, then deselect the buildings so that all that's left are the roads and try and extrude those. Once they're extruded, I can go ahead and do another extended repair to merge everything into one shell. And some of these roads came out okay, some didn't, so I'm gonna look through and check what needs to be deleted, like some of those buildings were floating off in the distance, so just de delete them. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and do another Z-plane cut so we have a flat bottom, and we'll just delete it from this piece and delete the bottom half, so because we don't need that. And then we'll scale it so it's a printable size again, do the same thing, making a six-sided cylinder at the right size, do an intersection boolean so that we have a hex tile, and there we go. And you can see the roads were kind of funny there, so I just chose to delete those and try again without the roads. I also went ahead and did the same thing where I selected each shell and removed the Matter Hackers building so that I could print those in a separate color and then glue them back onto the tile. Just to get a bunch of different cities printed, I went ahead and made Seattle and printed that in a different printer so I could get a lot done. And I don't think I have my retraction settings as tuned as I thought I did. So this has webbing all over it. There was already a bunch of stringing and zits all over the city. I've tried to clean this up already and I ended up breaking off half a dozen different buildings. So make sure when you're doing this that you have your printer really well calibrated with your retractions, which is what I'm gonna have to do now is go on that printer and do a lot of testing to get that really well tuned, but the race has been doing great, so I'm just gonna keep printing with that. For the Empire State Building in New York City, I could really use whatever software I want, whether it's OpenStreetMaps, whether it's CAD Mapper, or there's even a program called Placemaker where you can go and choose which areas you want. Now, Placemaker is a paid for program, so you would be able to get more detail, it's just something you'd have to pay a yearly license for. In my case, I'm just gonna use OpenStreetMaps again because that does a pretty good job at creating the models, and then from there, I can print out a small hex tile on the raise and do no problem. It'll get all the details from that tile, put that up on the wall, and then I'll try to crop it in and do just the city blocks around the Empire State Building and try and print that really tall because the Raze Pro 2 Plus is really good at tall prints. So this method uses OpenStreetMap, which utilizes the data that's already in Google Maps. So I can just go in here and search for Empire State Building, and then I can click Export, which will export the viewport. So this area right here is what I will get. Then I'll import it into OSM2 World, which is a program you need to download and install, which is free and open source. And once it's brought in, it will interpolate that data and create a map of the viewport that you had previously exported. Then I can export that as an OBJ, bring that into NetFab and do a lot of the same steps I did for the previous tiles, where I have to go in and repair it and thicken the land and make sure that everything is one mesh by repairing it with the extended repair and I'm gonna do some cuts here first so that we don't have the highways and the roads all the way off the edge of it and just make it so it's one nice rectangular shape. And then we'll be good to go. We can just take that and let it start printing. From there, I could drop it into Idea Maker, which is the slicing software for the Rays Pro 2 Plus. And then I could click Start and choose my slice settings. Everything there's already good. Don't need to change anything. And once the slice is completed, I'm gonna go ahead and preview it and make sure everything looks good here, just like I always do. And Everything looked clean and easy, so we'll export that, grab some Pro Series PLA from the raised cart, load that up into the side of the raised and just feed it up towards the nozzle. Now that material is running through clear, I can go ahead and start the print.
This project was a lot of fun, and now that I have the process down for taking 3D models of various cityscapes and converting them into 3D printable objects, I've actually had a lot of questions within the office on how I made those hex tiles. If you want to make a topographical map of your hometown and send that in to us, we would happily display that in our community hex tile wall. Now this whole project wouldn't have been possible without the Rays Pro 2 Plus just because of the sheer height that's needed to print out the Empire State Building here and the incredible detail needed for the individual hex tiles with the really teeny tiny Empire State Building. Stay tuned for the next weekend build. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.